Here at Long Beach North, we are going to put together an ancient woodland survey. Before carrying out the survey in the field, we need to complete some desk-based research, which allows us to plan out the full field survey. Websites such as magic.gov.uk check if the land is included on the ancient woodland inventory, if it has any statutory designations such as triple SI or scheduled ancient monuments which require additional consents, the type of habitat present, if it's part of a priority habitat network, how the woodland sits in the wider landscape. It's worthwhile looking at any old maps of the wood you can find, plus aerial photographs, which show how the wood has changed over time. In some areas, LIDAR, light detection and ranging data may be freely available. LIDAR can show the underlying topography and reveal possible archaeological features. Check species lists or other available biological surveys. Using basic maps and a pen, we divide the woodland into broad initial zones, which may indicate where to focus the survey work in the field. Zones mark where there is a change in the general condition and character of the woodland, so don't worry if they don't necessarily match the management compartments of the wood. Survey preparation Next, gather some basic equipment. A copy of the survey form some maps to annotate and a weather writer or case to keep dry. GPS is very useful, especially for accurately recording remnant features and you might want some field guides to help ID plants, for example. What to look for when doing a survey Field surveys record the whereabouts and condition of remnant features. Remnants are ancient woodland features, like old native trees or patches of woodland ground flora. We usually concentrate on broad remnant features in the survey. Native ground flora, specifically ancient woodland specialists. Old dead wood, both standing and fallen, but not recent decaying wood like plantation conifer stumps. Remnant trees and shrubs, these can be lone veterans surrounded and overshadowed by non-native trees. Historic and archaeological features. Carrying out a survey. Your survey should take in as much of each zone as possible. There are several standard methods for surveying, but a simple walk through the zone, trying to take in areas of variation, should be enough. Anything flagged up by LIDAR and other evidence sources should also be investigated. Linear features should be followed, as they may connect with other features that could explain their function in the landscape. Inaccessible areas such as dense rhododendron or birch regeneration should at least be mapped and noted. They will usually end up as separate zones and should be resurveyed once management improves access. Ensure areas under dense bracken and bramble are investigated at a suitable time of year. While a record of woodland remnants is central to the restoration process, it need not involve an extremely detailed ecological survey. The main aim is to get enough information about the whereabouts and condition of remnants to be able to make management decisions and prioritise action. The key objectives at this stage are to Find and map remnant features. Map notable features such as archaeological remains or ancient trees. Assess and record the level of threat to remnants. Note what management actions may be required for each zone. Provide a baseline for monitoring. Depending on the season and site conditions, an additional survey at another time of year may be required. Spring and early summer are the best times to see woodland plants, but the absence of ground cover in winter makes it easier to see archaeological features. It's important to record findings as you go along. You may need to rewrite these in electronic format once inside. Threat level For each zone, the threat level must be determined and recorded. 
This is based on the worst condition of any single feature. So, if one veteran relic native tree is critical, then that zone is recorded as critical. Threats include excessive shade from non-native trees, prolonged and heavy browsing by deer or livestock, significant pests and diseases, or other impacts such as ground disturbance and other previous damage. Each of these threats may need different management approaches. However, all these different threats can be categorised according to their impact in the same way. 1. Critical If nothing is done to counter the threat, the feature will be lost in a very short time frame. Work needs to begin within a year. 2. Threatened The features are unlikely to be lost in the short term. However, if nothing is done, then they will deteriorate further and may be lost in the medium to long term. Work needs to start in two to five years. 3. Secure The condition of features isn't declining and they generally have very few, if any, features of concern. However, these areas are not considered restored and further proactive work can help to ensure they develop into good ecological condition. Direction of change It takes a long time for changes to happen and it's useful to get an idea about the direction a feature is moving in. Declining The condition of the feature continues to get worse. This may be due to a lack of management or if management has been carried out, then the decline may have slowed but not stopped completely. No change, stable the condition of the feature isn't getting worse, but it's not getting any better either, or at least restoration is not seen to be progressing. Recovering The condition of the feature is getting better and the zone is clearly recovering. Relic trees may be responding to additional light, ancient woodland flora may be spreading or re-establishing from seed, and native regeneration may be getting away you should make some attempt to record the direction of change at every survey, including the first on a site as it sets the baseline for all future work. But don't be discouraged if in the first survey most zones are declining. It's what we expect at the start of the process and in subsequent surveys you can see how the wood is recovering even if it is still considered threatened. Bringing it all together Back in the office, use the information gathered to produce management recommendations. Generally, try to keep the same set of recommendations over an entire zone, and where they change, create a different zone. Although work will be prioritised based on the condition of zones, it may also sometimes be practical and appropriate to combine operations. So, for example, Sometimes it is possible to carry out phase one management for critical features like haloing individual relic trees as part of a wider phase two thinning intervention across a wider stand.